What's up guys, Max here, and today we are gonna be working on getting the carburetors in the free boat rebuilt. So for those who don't know, carburetor is a basically controlled fuel, fuel leak into the engine. Uh, obviously these carburetors are designed to run on an oil gas mixture, it's a two stroke motor. And I don't know what the condition inside of them is, they don't seem to move very well, and generally that's an indication that you're gonna want to uh, take them apart, clean them up. And so to make that happen, what I've done is I bought two sets of rebuild kits because there's two sets of carburetors. Uh, each carburetor has two bores. So there's four bores, four cylinders, makes sense. And the next step we gotta do is we gotta take the carburetors off of the boat. Um, and to make this easy, we've kind of brought out a set of tools. So we've got basically our standard assortment of three eighths and quarter inch standard sockets. We've got some uh, wrenches and this engine seems to have a lot of flathead screws. Little place to put our screws. Here's our engine. So what I've already done in the last video is I actually removed, there was a cover on this. Uh, that was just held on by three flathead screws, remove that. And so today we're gonna remove this cover piece. And then these are our carburetors themselves in here. And so we're gonna basically remove it all the way to the head flange. And uh, you're gonna need rebuild kits. There's some crazy looking linkages in here. So this is our controls from the throttle. So we have to remove all of this, um, remove our choke here, and kind of get all this off carefully. Uh, and to make this a little bit easier for me, what I've done is I've actually jacked up the front of the boat and put a big jack stand underneath it. So the engine is as close to the ground as it can get. Uh, it should make it a little easier for me to reach all this stuff and film. Unfortunately, this boat doesn't really have a convenient way of getting in and out. And so we're gonna try to do everything from back here and I'm gonna try to set you guys up in a position where you can see everything that I'm doing. Um, but we're just gonna do our best to, to kind of show you guys how this all comes apart. So we're gonna start by disassembling this side. What I've done here is I've marked this because I think that's how you control the amount of adjustment. And so we're gonna have to remove this flange and remove this can here uh, and get this unplugged from the other side and then i'm going to begin by unbolting this linkage from here so that we can remove uh, this from the plate i don't think we have to remove any of this this is all on the engine side So here we removed a screw, so now the throttle cables are loose because they're going to stay with the uh, with the boat. And now this thing is trying to come off, but something is still holding it on. So let's go on this side and take a look. So what is, what are you still trapped on? Oh, let's see, there's a, a breather line. Here at the bottom. That is the one piece of rubber. Oh, there we go. See, there's the breather line at the bottom. So now we can remove this guy, set that aside, and we're going to grab two. These are the gaskets uh, we're going to be replacing as well. So those will go with that just to keep everything clean. And now we have an unobstructed view to our carburetors if we move our battery cables out of the way. So this is our choke mechanism. And then this back here is our throttle mechanism. That seems to be moving a little bit better. And this is our electric choke that we're probably gonna have to replace. Um, but this part it goes back to this distribution block. That's how it unplugs. So we will figure that out later because a choke isn't really necessary here in Texas in the summer. So next steps is we got to start removing all of these bolts and then this should come off because I believe 
this basically just pushes against here. So there isn't any sort of mechanical throttle linkage, it just pushes on this bushing right here. So if you look at the way these cables work, this arm is attached to the throttle and it basically starts here like that and pushes this further open as it goes. So the carburetors do not have a mechanical linkage attaching them to the, uh, to the throttle, it just pushes on it. So all this kind of synchronization stuff should stay with the carburetors. So the next thing is we gotta get this size uh, socket and start removing stuff. So here we go, here's everything off. And weird stuff, there's this little pumper, which I guess is for like pre-pumping some gas into the carburetors. This was attached to a linkage that went to the um, went to the fuel pumps. We took that off, here's our old fuel lines. Here's a vacuum line that's been broken. Um, and so what we can do now is take a look at the carburetor. And they're a little sticky. But they're not too terribly bad. I did have to disconnect this linkage. All that was going on here was that it was in the way of the bottom bolt. So I had to just pop that guy right out and we popped it right back in. Um, on this side, this is part of that, that fuel pump assembly. So that's where that connected to. And as you can see, there's some very crusty fuel lines back here, as well as uh, some very crust carburetors and when you shake your carburetors and dust comes out that's usually a pretty good indication that these are in need of a rebuild let's say so i did buy this this is new old stock this is sierra part 18-7046 this is a carburetor kit you need two of these obviously because each one is for one of these carburetors and these are 319671 part number if anybody is Super curious. Um, they actually don't look too terribly bad. They're probably pretty gummed up. And the next step is we're gonna clean them. So from here on out, we're gonna be on the workbench rebuilding these carburetors. So let's discuss how we rebuild carburetors. And let me show you my workbench. Um, it's obviously well lit, which is a positive. And I like using these, these little mechanics silicone trays. Uh, they deform with gasoline but they always seem to come back to their shape and I really like using them for that reason. Um, brake cleaner, this is just standard brake cleaner. We've got some paper towels, we've got our carburetors. We'll uh, go get brushes and picks and stuff and, as we need them. Um, but these kits come with one very important thing and you'll see me looking at it, which is this. This is a diagram that I've conveniently taped uh, in front of my face shows you how these carburetors come apart and how uh, to put them back together. And so the two carburetors are attached. I've already cut this fuel line. This is just a wide fuel line and we're gonna work on the bottom carburetor first. And so all you really have to do is knock out this connecting pin and this connecting pin and you could use a hammer like a professional or you could use whatever's laying around. Here is our rebuild kit. We're gonna lay that aside for now. And here is our carburetor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on some gloves and uh, then we can start taking this apart. And this is the bottom carburetor. Um, and so we're gonna 
do a couple of things. First of all, we're gonna replace and clean out any jets, uh, needles, that kind of stuff on the inside. And secondly, we, I wanna get this mechanism uh, working just a little bit better because it's, it's just a little sticky uh, in my opinion. And we definitely want full throttle for our 135 horsepowers. So we're gonna start by peeling away this gasket, which we have new ones of, so we can peel that off, discard it, wasn't too stuck. And we're going to remove what's left of this hose, which frankly isn't very much. Let's start with the fun part, which is the bottom. Uh, now this entire boat seems to be assembled out of flathead screws, which I gotta say, not my favorite thing. And then we give it a tappy tap tap. And there we go. And you can see this is what it looks like when you uh, have fuel that has oil that has dried out. You end up with a bunch of caked on goop in the bottom. Uh, this gasket doesn't actually look all that bad, but we're gonna replace it because we got new ones. And so the next step is we're going to clean out the passages in this before we move on to our little floaty float. So now you can see there's holes down in there that connect out to these drain points. And you wanna make sure every single thing in this carburetor is spotless. And now we can move on to the body. Now, this is your float. And the way your float works is when fuel comes in, this thing is down, so fuel comes in, it floats, and it gets to a point and shuts off the fuel flow. That way the bowl is always full. Now this, uh, these are usually knockouts. And so sometimes you can just push on them a little bit and then they slide, yeah. So you can see this one just slides right out, doesn't take any force. And we remove the float and here you can see that's the uh, needle and that's the seat and that controls your fuel coming in from your fuel pump. So now we're gonna just set all these components aside where they won't get lost. And now if you look in here, you can see there's two sealed plugs we have new plugs so presumably there's something behind them that's important and then we have this which meters fuel in against this is the seat for the needle i just showed you so if we grab our big screwdriver there we go just need to find the biggest screwdriver so we can remove that and now we're going to clean it so this is our actual jet and it's basically a little orifice and what you do to see if it's good or not, you look at the light, and this one is actually pretty clean. Sometimes you gotta blow through them with uh, brake parts cleaner, or compressed air, or if they're really bad, you have to take like a piano wire or something like that, and just run them through there until you get all the gunk out. This one is actually really, really clean. Let's see if we can find a number on it. So this is a number 30 jet that came out of they came out of this side was the number 30 jet looks like they're both number 30 jets so same size that feels a lot better so now that we got this thing cleaned and moving pretty good we can start the reassembly process so to reassemble all we're going to do is we're going to drop our little jets in and send them home they just go in hand tight and then then we take these little plugs that we've cleaned up put new gaskets on them and put them back after we've reinstalled the jets so now we can go through and install our new main seat and we can install this and this goes like that and we just drop it into the hole and then i'm going to reuse this because it's more trick than the one that came with it and just like that we have the ability to control our fuel flow we can reinstall our little rubber gasket that seems to go like that and what i always like to do at this point is take a look at the old rubber gasket and make sure 
there's nothing goofy. So all the holes line up, everything looks fine, so we can discard that. Then we take our bottom lid, reinstall that, and then we're going to take our four screws, reinstall dam. What I do is I like to snug all these down, just barely finger tight, until they're all kind of barely finger tight. And then we can bring them down tight. And you know what we forgot? There is supposed to be a seal on the bottom of this thing that I completely forgot about. And this is a perfectly good example, right? Like, no matter how much experience you have, no matter how many carburetors you've rebuilt, it's always important to look back and check what's left in your parts pile. And I saw that there was an extra seal there. Didn't make any sense. So, and then this guy can just pop right in there. So this allows us our choke control. And then this guy over here is our throttle. So now we got to put our bottom plugs in. Remember these guys? And again, we got to get new gaskets onto them. And just like that, we got one carburetor rebuilt. So these kits are kind of universal. And so they include uh, parts for a couple of different kinds of carburetors. And so um, we don't always use all the parts. So that's one carburetor done. I got to do the other carburetor, same thing all over again. And I'll catch you guys when we are ready to start uh, putting this back in the boat. Okay. So we've got both sets of carburetors completed. The top one was identical to the bottom, so I didn't tape it. Um, we've reconnected these linkages over here and I've added our fuel distribution loop right here. This is just kind of standard, um, what is this? Just standard fuel hose. Um, one thing I will say about fuel hose, um, this is made by Continental. This is 516's hose, which is what you need for this motor. Um, the fuel 516's hose, I think costs something like $35 for 25 feet. You can buy Amazon, hose uh, for less than half that price. When it comes to fuel, I highly recommend you buy Continental, you buy Gates, you buy a real manufacturer. The last thing you want is hose work hardening faster than you think or having pinholes in it so it loses prime all the time. Um, fuel hose is not something that I would uh, skimp on. But I did skimp on these. These are Chinese three or four stainless uh, hose clamps, which definitely work better than the uh, zip ties that were here before them. Um, finally, they the kits that I showed you earlier, they include the gaskets that go on the face. So this is the gasket that goes between uh, the carburetor and the engine. So we are using new ones of those. However, there is this hard rubber gasket that goes between the front of the carburetor here where the uh, choke plate is and uh, this guy. So they sit in here. Uh, these are not included in the kit. Uh, these are fine as far as I can tell. And so we're going to just reuse them. But uh, if you want to do it right, I would, I would order these separately and I don't have a part number for them. Additionally, there is a rubber gasket on the inside of the air box, we're going to call it. Um, I also did not buy that, but uh, if you were a hack like me, I would strongly recommend that you do because uh, this one's pretty crunchy, but I'm not really worried too much about air leaks uh, between, you know, the faces of the air box. Uh, so the next step is we got to get these back on the boat. Let me show you what I did. So we haven't even begun to install our carburetors yet, as you can see here. So this is where our carburetors mount. I'm going to bring you guys over here so you can see what I'm talking about here. So there's... Uh, that, if you remember, there's a fuel pump that mounts to this side right here, and we'll show you guys that in a minute. But um, there are two vacuum lines that need to be installed and a new fuel line, right? Because we're replacing all the fuel lines all the way back to the fuel tank, right? Everything on this is crusty. So there's this smaller, um, I think this is 316ths 
vacuum line. This is like boost line from a turbo project, but that's what I had. That goes down there. I believe this is crankcase ventilation because this feeds into the faceplate in front of the carburetors, meaning that this is just letting a little bit of pressure out of the crankcase and then back through the carburetors. This hooks down under here and was basically the same size as a fuel line. However, um, so this would be what, 516s I think? This goes to what's called the Pulsar, and the Pulsar is what, unsurprisingly, let me get you guys over here. The Pulsar is what pulses, and what it does is it creates vacuum, momentary bursts of vacuum, which pumps a diaphragm in our fuel pump, which keeps fuel flowing. So this black vacuum line will go to the middle port on our fuel pump, and I basically just cut everything long for now. And then down here, this is a quick connect style uh, fuel release um i believe it's like a johnson evanrude thing um you can find them they're kind of generic and so this is the factory one we clean it out there's a fuel hose this is a new fuel hose that runs in here and this will be our fuel in and this will go to the inlet side of our fuel pump which is going to sit somewhere over here and we'll trim this down uh, as well so now i think we are finally ready to begin installing our carburetors and trying to get all of this mess uh, back together. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you guys what I'm doing here. So these are our new gaskets that came with our carburetor rebuild kit. And this is the direction the carburetors go on. And some of these are very easy to install, but the bottom, let's see, the bottom bolts, for both carburetors are not gonna play nice. So the bottom nuts on these are captive. So you have to kind of slide the carburetor all the way out until these studs back here are flush like this. And then you have to throw it, put on the space or the uh, washer and the nut and then start to tighten them. The top two on both carburetors are easily accessible. So let me bring you guys over here and I'll show you. So if you see right here, because of this, there is no direct path. And so, as you can see right here, we gotta put on the washer, then slide it in a little bit, put on the nut, slide it in a little bit, and then tighten the nut. And the same thing is true down here, which is a huge pain in the butt. Um, and so, we're gonna have to do this very carefully, very slowly, very calmly, with minimal swearing, probably get a magnet for the nuts we're gonna inevitably drop and uh, just work our way around and then tighten them all down. All right, now we got our carburetors on, which is cool. They work, which is cool. Our throttle kind of works, which is kind of cool. Um, we'll kind of see what we got to lubricate here to make this function a little better. But now we got to add on this face plate and it's very critical that you don't forget these gaskets in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, cause it bolts on through the front. So we're gonna put these gaskets on and then we're gonna put the bolts through them to hold the gaskets. It's also very critical that you don't forget this little nipple down here. Uh, cause it's gonna be really hard to access later. That's our vacuum port for the PCV. Uh, I guess it's our PCV port for the PCV. So that's gonna be this little guy. And now, I really wish I'd left it just a little longer, but I think we're gonna be okay. And the reason I wanna show you guys how much I'm struggling with this is to let you know that it's completely okay uh, to struggle with this stuff. A lot of times we see uh, folks on YouTube and you just kinda see the, the finished product and you don't know who's working on it and you don't know, you know, how honest everybody's being and sometimes things look a lot easier than they are on the television uh, but it's important to remember it's it's okay to to kind of struggle and get mad and you know bruise your knuckles and and kind of all that stuff there's nothing wrong with it it's about you know kind of sticking with it and getting stuff done. Sorry, I didn't realize the camera was off. Um, 
So all we really did was came over here and reassembled this side. So we want to make sure this bar is in here. These are our throttle cables. They're installed with this cover plate. Uh, this is our choke. I'm hoping that we're just not going to need it because as you can see, the ground wire is completely breaking apart and I wasn't even able to solder to it. And unfortunately they don't make new ones of these anymore. You have to buy a used one and the used ones are between 150 and $200, which is way more than I'm willing to spend on a choke uh, for this boat. So, um, it's currently summer in Texas, so it's going to be quite a while before we really need a choke, assuming these carburetors are set up correctly. Uh, so we're just going to go with it. I think tonight all that's really left is to see if we can get uh, the fuel pump uh, installed back where it needs to go and make the last couple of fuel cables, and I'll show you guys those in a second. Step one, we hooked up a battery back up, so now we can crank the motor over. Step two, there is a quick connect fuel fitting hooked to a 5 16 fuel hose running to a 5 16 fuel filter and to a 5 16 fuel bulb. The bulb, as you can see, works good. And here I've just got a VP jug with some uh, premix from an old dirt bike. And if we come over here and we make sure we're in neutral, right? So this is our shifter, all the forwards all the reverse she a little sticky but neutral switch works we've got a key and the motor runs so we got the fuel pump installed it's very important this is your vacuum line right here this goes down to the pulsar this goes to the back of the fuel pump the output of the fuel pump goes to the middle port and the input of the fuel is on the front port we've got our carbs all set up all right so we got this thing rigged up out here to remote starter. Let's see if she'll run. Apparently it'll keep running even on one cylinder. So until we get uh, our water pump and stuff repaired, I don't want to run it for too long because obviously it, uh, uh, you know, isn't going to be happy if it's not being cooled off with that i want to thank you guys for watching uh if you like the video hit the like button leave me a comment if you worked on one of these old two smokes before i'd love to hear your feedback if you like the channel please subscribe there's uh more boat content as well as some other cool stuff in the pipeline see you guys later